Today I am back at Greg's Music Center in Newcastle, California. If you're interested in coming here and visiting his really cool shop full of awesome organs like this one, the contact information will be in the description of this video. Now today I'm here with an 18900, which was Roland's uh, flagship model. There was a, there were a couple of um, trim levels that were slightly higher than this, such as the platinum level, which did not have the separation here in the wood, and all of this was actually one single piece. But essentially, other than the aesthetic of this organ, which that is a very subtle difference, the 18900 and this particular one are basically exactly the same as the 900 platinum. There was actually an upgrade package that you could buy that would install extra sounds, new um, music um, stuff, and also extra pipe organ voices and supernatural sounds and all kinds of things. And this um, upgrade has actually been installed in this organ. So it is essentially, it has all of the awesome features of the 900 Platinum, even though there is no Platinum badging right here. So I'm gonna put this back up here. I'm gonna take on a quick little tour of the sounds. I'm not gonna demonstrate every single one, but what I will do is just kind of show you the awesome menu that we have. As you can see, there is a massive touch screen that's uh, it's like a, almost like a seven inch tablet or something like that. And essentially you have a whole bunch of categories of sound. And so for any of these buttons here, we have three categories of buttons over here. We have organ, symphonic, and orchestral. And so you can just start off with the main buttons here that are you know various organ sounds. Let me play with this a little bit. Whoops, I hit a thing. Let me go back here. You got different organ sounds. If you hit alternate, it gives you a different sound. But of course, if you hit others, it opens this menu here that will then bring up various sounds. And if you hit organ, for example, we have 14 different pages on organ sounds. And I'm just gonna click through them. I'm not gonna play every single one. That would literally take half an hour. As you can see, there's 14 different pages of organ things. If we go to strings, there's five different varieties of string sounds. There are five different pages of them, I must add. There's six different varieties of pages on varieties of human voices. There are four different pages of different piano sounds, as you can see. We've got pianos and electric pianos and harpsichords and clavichords and all kinds of things. We've got six different pages of varieties of guitar. We have um, nine different varieties of brass and saxophone. We've got five pages of woodwinds. We've got six pages of lead pad synth stuff. We've got five pages of bass instruments. And we've got eight pages of percussion. And that's not it. If we go to the orchestral others tab, we click that, then we get two extra categories of sound banks. We have the AEX voice, which has four different pages of various um, instruments. I think they're all kind of mixed. We've got flutes and brass and all kinds of stuff in here. And we also have the supernatural sound category, which has five different sounds of extra realistic, extra expressive sounds, which I believe was one of the things that the, uh, the upgrade package installed. So uh, the supernatural sounds alone are really cool. I'll give you a demonstration of one of my favorites in that category. And as you can see, there are three different other categories here. So there's one for organ, there's one for symphonic, and one for orchestral. And so even though this says symphonic, if you go into the others menu, it's not stopping you from selecting an organ sound. Or on the organ menu, it's not, select, it's not stopping you from selecting an orchestral instrument, which I think is a nice feature because then you can literally be playing a complete orchestra of three different sounds here on the upper manual. Another, there's actually four different sounds here because we have organ, symphonic, orchestral, and also solo, which is not active at the moment. If I bring that up. It is a, a trumpet. And another cool thing, like you just saw on the screen there, if I activate these buttons, which are levels, as you can see, if I push it up, it increases. If I push it again, it kind of goes up by half. And then if I push it again, it goes up one more. On the monitor, if I hit hold, you can you have the same exact thing as so every time I push a button, you can see the level increase. Every time I push the button down, you can see it decrease. And I believe you can also, okay, you cannot change them from inside the touch screen, but I hit a button, sorry about that. If um, you can just see the levels change and you can get a completely graphic visualization of what is going on at the moment without having to look up and kind of scan all your different little miniature screens. You can look here at this one screen and say, okay, I want the pedal orchestral sound to come up, which I'm actually, forget what that is. Oh, it's down here. So let's have the pedal organ sound be all the way up or something like that. It's a really nice feature and it's, uh, it's very nice. The touch screen here is very responsive. As you can see, when I hit something, it basically immediately loads. There's no weird lag times or anything like that. It's very responsive. It does everything I want it to do. I somehow activated, uh, what is that sound? I somehow accidentally activated timpani on the lower manual, which is not what I wanted. But as you can see, 
now it's clavichord. But it's got a massive amount of sounds on it, which is one of my favorite things about the 18900 as well as the 1890 and a lot of the other Roland Atelier organs. Now this has more sounds than any of the other Roland organs. As I showed you, it has 14 different pages of organ sounds alone, and there's eight different organ sounds on each page. And so you can do the math there. That is a lot of different organ sounds. Now one thing that's special about the 18900 is it actually has manual draw bars. On the 1890, I know for a fact, if you went into the menu, you would get something similar to this where you would have little uh, virtual draw bars that you could move around, which did the same thing as a normal drawbar, but they were only virtual and they were in the screen. This has that as well, and as you can see, you can move the drawbars around and change them. But you actually have real drawbars here as well, and they have a really nice, uh, heavy quality feel to them, which is one of my favorite things about this organ, is the feel of the drawbars. They have a really nice, substantial feel to them. And as you can see on the screen here, when I move the drawbars, they do update in real time. And now if I move a drawbar on the screen, it doesn't move the actual drawbar in real life, and if I if I update the real-life drawbar, the on-screen drawbar will snap into place to where the position of the real-life drawbar is. So for example, if I take the uh, fundamental drawbar on the screen, pull it all the way out, and then this one is on minimum. So if I pull this one out, the screen will snap back to uh, be in line with where the real-life drawbar is. So we've got drawbars for the upper manual. We've got drawbars for the pedal, which, as you would imagine, do the drawbars for the pedal. And we also have the same thing for the lower manual. Now, one thing that's special about the Roland organ, the 18900, is you also have a drawbar for your solo sound, which means this little category up here. So if, let's get the trumpet back up, because I like that one. And let me also mute these, because those are playing. As you can see, I can change the volume of the trumpet sound as well. So that way there I can have um, the organ sound. Playing along with the trumpet sound or any of the other uh, solo categories. Again, if I go into the others menu here for the solo and then I press this button, as you can see, I have a whole bunch of variations on sounds, just like all the other ones. So you have a massive variety of various sounds and sound combinations. I mean, there's basically an infinite amount of sound combinations you can do with these organs, which is a really fantastic thing. Now, you, we also have a bunch of rhythms that you can play here as well. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but we've got, let's turn off the arranger. We've got just straight up rhythms, first of all. This is a stage vocal rhythm is what they're calling it. Big band vocal. Really cool sounding. This is a pop vocal beat. We've got a ballad beat. And again, for each rhythm, we have a bunch of different sounds. On Latin beat, we have nine pages of rhythms. On uh, big band swing, we have eight. On rhythm, uh, country gospel, we've got six. On waltz and march, we've got three different pages of rhythms specifically for that type of music, which again, is a massive variety of different sounds. And so you can use these in music, you can set them up and play along with them, use them as a fancy metronome, all kinds of things. One thing I like about the 18900 that the Roland 1890 does not have is if you activate a rhythm, there's a little wheel here. And if you look here at the top, which is your metronome speed, it alters your metronome speed. Now before, I don't even remember how the 1890 does increases of metronome speed. I assume you'd go into a menu and you'd be able to alter it. But this one here just has a really handy little slider and you can make it go ridiculously fast here. All the way up to 500 beats per minute. You can see this little ball over here that shows you where the beats are. It's absolutely freaking out. It can hardly even keep up with 500 beats per minute which is kind of funny. So let me just slow that down. And the, the little bouncing ball is actually a nice feature because you can visualize when the beat is actually gonna come. As you heard earlier, you, those also are arrangers. So it'll imitate the chord you're doing. which is a nice feature. And I had a lot of fun with that when I was younger. It was really fun to just listen to all the different things. You can also do fills with the drums. I forgot about that. If we get this in here, we can hit, uh, I think we can do fills. I forget how it works now, but oh, variation. Well, the, okay, these are variations. And in between each variation, it does a fill which I think is a really nice feature. And I had a lot of fun with that as well as a kid. You can also do intros and endings, so you can hit, if you hit intro, then hit start. I assume it would do an intro, maybe that's the arranger. Yeah, it's the arranger. 
And then there's also endings, countdown, sync start is when you activate that, and then when you hit, hit a button, it starts instantly when you hit a key at the uh, lower manual. Lots of really cool features. As you can see, this instrument is completely packed with features. Uh, it's basically the best of technology and the best of organ sounds uh, combined into one. One of my favorite things about the 18900 is also this D-beam feature over here, which is a basically like a virtual button. <laughs> Whoops, that was really loud. Sorry about that. It's a, a little light beam that when it gets intercepted and it detects something in the way, it triggers a sound. As you can see, it's very sensitive. You don't have to be like right on top of it or anything. It's very sensitive. We've got, they call it pitch, but it's basically just a drum beat. We've got filler, which is a reverse symbol. And then we've also got volume, which is this. And honestly, just using that, it feels like I have the force or something because I'm just like waving my hand and it plays. A lot of fun. Now I think that's about it for features on the AT900. A couple things that it doesn't have, I mean that it has that the AT90 does not have is a, a CD slot here so you can input a CD, play music off of it, record music to it, and there's also a USB drive here because you can input special recordings and you can import them with a USB. On the AT90 it's actually a floppy disk which, let's be real, no one uses floppy disks anymore. In fact, I've heard CDs are actually going out, but everyone uses USB still today so you can import very various uh, sound files and recordings and all kinds of stuff. As you can see, there's a little button here that says record and play. And so if I hit record, I'm sure it would actually record me. Let's try that. Record as, okay, actually, you know what? I don't want to fill up the hard drive on here because I don't know what all, any of that is, but you can make recordings. I've done it before on my AT90. There's Vima tunes. I'm not going to play anything. I don't know what that is. It might be copyrighted music, but you have all kinds of cool things that you can do with this organ. <clears throat> The Roland AT900, as well as many of the other Atelier lineups of organs, have so many features on it, I literally just learned something new about the AT900 just now. Now, many of the Roland Atelier organs have a quick guide menu, so if you hit this button on the screen, it gives you a thing that says try pressing buttons or keys or operating the controllers. So if I moved anything on the organ, it would bring up a menu about that. So if I hit, moved a drawbar, okay, not a drawbar, but if I press the lower manual, it would bring up a menu that gives me customization options for the lower manual. Just, a, just, just a, Example, but if I go into index, I hit, well not L, if I hit D, and then I go to the next page, it gives you D-beam assignment options. And so this is for that D-beam um, thing that I was showing you earlier, the little, uh, like the force thing that you can wave your hands over. So if I activate the organ sound on the lower manual, and I wave my hand over it, listen to what happens. Hear that? It's changing the rotary sound speed. It's a little bit subtle, but you can hear that. Which is one of my favorite things about the D-beam. I didn't know you could do that with it, but I love that because instead of having to target a button or move a switch like you do on like a B3, you have to actually move a little knob. On this one, if you don't want to use the D-beam to change the rotary, there's a little button right down here that you can hit that will activate it just like the same way. But this one here, it's so sensitive. You just slap your hand over there and it works. You can go over there again and it turns off. It's very sensitive. Your hand hardly has to be there for just a moment. Moving my hand like that, that quickly actually triggered it, which I love. It's so sensitive that it's very easy to control, and that's just one of my favorite things. You can also do a wheel brake, which I assume... I'm not sure what the wheel brake does. It does not actually lock up the Leslie wheel like I thought it would. Not sure what that one does. Now, the pitch up is fun. It's basically just changing the pitch of the note. Uh, based on how, f it's not really based on how close your hand is to it. Actually, no, it is, it is, it is. Kind of reminds me of the theremin, the way you can control the pitch of the sound by just moving your hand closer and farther away from it. Modulation, not sure what that one does. Fill in, I assume these are controls for the drums, and modulation might be as well. It might be changing the variation of the drums. We have crash symbol, concert symbol. So like that's the two symbols that you'd clap together. Concert bass drum, wow, that's cool. Church bell, we all know what this is gonna sound like. Big gong, oh heck yes. Wind chime down, triangle. 
fiber slap, wind whistle, big shot like a cannon. That is fun. And then smash glass. So you've got three pages of options here for D-beam assignments. And the N control ones, these might be customs that you can program in yourself. I'm not really sure what those ones do. But that's just another cool feature that this organ has. You can customize the D-beam feature so you're not only stuck to these three options. Again, that's wind beam, wind chime up. There's also wind chime down in the options menu. So that's a really cool feature. So now I'm going to take a little bit to program in my draw bars here. I'm going to turn that off, turn that off. That's good. So that is running. This is running. All right, let's play Bach. Let me get the volume up. Okay, let me take that off now. give an idea of how realistic these sounds are and of course again nothing really compares to the sound of a true pipe organ but this comes very very close for a digital organ and the Roland Atelier organs have really great sounds that do not sound like cheesy in any way like a lot of some um, digital organs can uh, the Roland organ sounds are really fantastic just to give you an example of one of my favorite sounds on here it's the it's in the supernatural sound category and it's the shakuhachi which is like a Japanese kind of flute and the expression you can get out of it is really amazing because as you change the expression pedal, it changes the timbre of the sound. And I'm told that that's because there's actually kind of like two different sounds playing at once. So as you increase the expression pedal, the sound will change. It'll add a little bit in at the very top. So let me just play a little bit for you. Uh, that's, again, one of my favorite things is I love how when you're playing something and then you gently increase the pedal, it sounds like someone's just gently increasing their breath into the instrument. Versus when you have the expression pedal up and you play the note, it sounds a little bit different. And then, of course, at the very top, the sound kind of gets distorted like someone's blowing really hard into it. The detail that Roland has put into some of these sounds is really incredible, and uh, it just makes the instrument very, very enjoyable to play on. Again, just going to show off one um, another cool feature about this instrument is a lot of the time when you're playing an instrument, such as an organ, you might run out of keys if you're playing a song that wasn't written for the organ, like Superstition. I'm supposed to be playing an extra bass note down here. At least I like to do it when I'm playing the song on the piano but I don't have an extra E flat down there. So what I can do is I can go into the sound keyboard option on the screen. I can hit the lower manual button and then I have an octave shift. And if I shift it down one octave, listen to how it sounds here. If I shift it up an octave, or down an octave really. Sorry, wrong way. Sounds the exact same way, but I'm playing it an octave higher, which means I can now get to that low E flat.
which is really fun. And you can also take the octave shift to crazy extremes and go three octaves lower than you're supposed to. And play ridiculously silly notes, which everybody loves to do. In this same menu, you can also uh, change reverb depth as well. It defaults to eight, which I personally think is a little bit much, but it's not difficult at all to come in and decrease or increase it. That's the default. Sounds like you're in a big hall. You can decrease it down to two, which I like, or you can increase it all the way up to 10, which sounds like you're in a really, really big hall. So again, the Roland 18900 is a really feature-filled organ. It has so many capabilities. And one another thing I like about it is it's not terribly overwhelming. Sometimes you sit, particularly at an older digital organ, and you, you look at it and your face is just filled with buttons. All you see is buttons. But this one here, the touchscreen cleans up a massive amount of that. You have some buttons, but if you just kind of sit down and look at it, it's very easy to figure out. Everything is really well labeled. And it's one of my favorite things about the Roland Atelier organs. They really laid out all of the controls in a very easy to understand way and it's just absolutely fantastic. One thing I forgot to mention is there's also presets down here and you can program all of these and you can even prog them, program them to a little foot switch down here. Which if I can find it, you can move the um, the presets just with the foot pedal, which is a great feature. So if you're playing a song and you want to change the way it sounds, you can hit the little foot switch. It'll go to the different preset, which you can completely program and save. It's very easy to save and it's a really great feature. There's two little foot switches down here on the pedal, and there's also a sustain pedal here as well, which works on the lower manual. You can also program that as well. If I went into the quick guide menu, hit the damper pedal, you can have damper pedal going to upper, to lower, solo damper off, expression pedal, blah, blah, blah. All these really cool things. It's very easy with the quick guide thing to uh, customize it, to change it, to do everything and set everything up the exact way you like. And as I'm looking at the organ, I'm just realizing features I didn't even mention. The lights on the organ are absolutely fantastic. As you can see, there's a whole row of lights all the way up along the top here. And then there's also lights for the music desk, and there's also lights for the pedal as well. The light for the pedal is a little bit dim in this lighting here, but if you were running it at night, it would make it much easier to be able to see the pedals. You can kind of see reflection on the pedals and stuff. There is a light down here, as you can see. And there's a switch underneath somewhere. I don't know where it is at the moment, but you can actually switch off those lights if you wanted to. Uh, that one. You can switch off the lights if you want to, which I kind of think the organ looks amazing with the lights on, so I always leave it on. But if you want to have the lights off to save energy because they're not LEDs, you can do that as well. One final feature is the music desk can actually slide forward just a few inches to bring the music a little bit closer to you. So if you're having difficulty seeing it at that distance, which is totally understandable because look how far, far away it is from your face, you can both pull this forwards, lean in a little bit, and then you can see the music much better. So that's a very nice feature. Again, the LED lights help with that too because you can see it better. There's just so many features, it's so hard to fit them all into a video without forgetting something and then having to do some at the very end. Another thing I like about this organ is the roll top cover which looks beautiful. This wood that it's made of is a really, really nice color, and the roll top is very, it makes it look a lot cleaner. It keeps dust out, so if you wanted to keep the organ away when you're not playing it, you can just lower the cover, and then it looks very, very nice. So I think that's about everything that I'm gonna cover in this video on the AT900. Again, there's so many features. I've probably forgotten some, and if you guys are familiar with this organ, let me know of some of the cool things that it can do that I happen to forget about. Uh, there's so many cool things. The touchscreen is great. I'm just looking at it, I, I love these organs so much. They're probably my favorite digital organ that I have ever played on. Now, if you're interested in where I found this organ, once again, the location and uh, contact information for this store will be down in the description of this video. Uh, the owner of the store, Greg, I've known him for many years, and he has a great selection of Roland Atelier organs and other brands as well. They're all in great condition, and they all work just as well as this one does. <laughs>
So one cool thing about the Roland Atelier 900 is you can actually use a remote with it. This is a special Roland branded remote. You can't just use any gener generic TV remote. But if you hit the demo button, which is over here under composers, you can actually cycle through various demo songs. The little eye that receives the signal from this is actually down here. So if you're pointing it over here, it's not going to work. If you point it over here, it will. And uh, you can actually cycle through a bunch of demo songs. You can also change the volume. For example, let me play some Bach music here. And then, if you look on the screen, you can see the volume is ticking down, and you can also hear it. So if you had one of these in your house, you could just have this going in the background. People can talk over it. Heck, you could even close this. It's not going to receive the signal anymore because the eye is closed, but you can just have it going there and no one's going to know where the music is coming from. And if you didn't even want them to know the thing was on, you can turn off that switch, which is down here. And then they're like, where's the music coming from? I have no idea. I don't know. Maybe that wouldn't work because you could just figure out where the sound was coming from. But that demo feature alone, I think is pretty cool. You can pause it, skip to the next one, all kinds of stuff. And another thing I love about this organ is the bench. Now there's actually a really nice metal lock here that you can see that you can use to lock the bench. Every time I pull up on it, I get confused by that. But it's got nice wooden sides. They're stained and everything. And it's just a really nice bench. You have massive amount of storage here for um, music books. I'm not exactly sure what you could put in here. I guess CDs. It's about the right size for CDs and it does have a CD slot. So that's probably what that would be used for. The lid will lock as well. So you have have to lift up this little lever to be able to close it and then it will lock automatically with this really nice high quality lock and that's where the, the remote is in the organ and that's actually why I forgot about the remote and that it was a thing until I went to open up this bench because I realized that I had forgotten to talk about the bench as well but now I have and I just thought you'd show it I thought I'd show it to you guys because it's kind of interesting it's very high quality it's very well made it's very sturdy and uh, as you can see it's got wood all the way down the side again that sound uh, makes it when it locks very nice um, it's got a little wooden footrest here, very much like, like a Hammond B3 has it. It has a little footrest that's actually part of the pedal board. On this instrument, it's part of the bench. And if we take a look at the pedal board here, we can see that it's all wood. It looks like the pedals themselves are made of wood. The little back piece here is made of wood. And that can actually just slide out when you're moving the organ. So you can just slide it out. There's a cable you disconnect, and then the pedal board is its own separate piece. So it's very, very cool. I love this organ so much. <laughs> So hopefully you've enjoyed this video on the Roland AT900. Again, there's so many cool features that this organ can do. Uh, there's impossible to remember them all. If I actually was able to remember them all, the video would probably be about two hours long because it can do so many cool things. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. I've got videos on my channel about the AT90 as well. Basically this thing's little brother. I happen to own one of those and I did a video a while back talking about it, talking about some of the features it does. So if you're interested in that, you can go check out that video and uh, you can check out my other content as well. I've got videos on pianos and other cool instruments as well on my channel. And if you like that content, you might want to think about subscribing. And if you do that, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.